well, my first mistake putting it together. I don't know if anybody caught this. I'd be really curious to know if anybody saw this in the video. Um, my new program counter was plugged in backwards. Um, uh, and so I had ground going to plus five and plus five going to ground, having this thing in backwards. So uh, when I tried to power it up, it was just drawing too much current. I couldn't figure out why. Um, Anyway, flip this around and uh, all the little wires are long enough except for the increment wire which needs to go over here. So I'll need to put on a different uh, a different wire here uh, to get it over to a PC increment. Um, and it now powers up, uh, which is great. Um, and uh, I don't know if I completely damaged this. I don't think I did. It looks like it's probably okay. It just kind of crowbarred the power supply so I think that kind of kept everybody in the safe range. It seems to be drawing at about uh, 350 milliamps uh, right now for the entire thing and that's not being clocked so I, I'm assuming it um, may or may not go up uh, when we clock it. It's conceivable it's kind of 350 milliamps is about where it's supposed to be. Um, I think it's probably mostly variable on which LEDs are lit uh, and how many LEDs are lit. Um, so, uh, now that I have this up and around, uh, I need to figure out where these two wires go. Uh, this is the two-phase clock, and when I ripped this thing all apart, um, I didn't look close enough. Maybe I could go, <laughs> go back and look at the videos I've shot and figure out uh, which one of these is the um, phase one clock and which is the phase two clock, uh, or phase zero and phase one. On the PC board, they're marked... Um, uh, the from pulse and the to pulse. And if you remember that, uh, see if I can remember it, the uh, from pulse is a negative going pulse and centered on that negative going pulse is a positive to pulse. So uh, that makes sense. So I should be able to maybe hook up the logic analyzer and take a look at my um, chip or whatever. Um, I have the, uh, uh, the, the GAL uh, 22V10 uh, and that's going to go over here somewhere. Um, not on here, but on a board. I'll, I'll have to build a little proto board um, that has the um, 22 V10, which generates the two-phase clock. So uh, these two wires will, will go to that. So short, short little distance here. And then a, a 555 timer, um, which I could probably use... Uh, something like this. You can get these off of eBay all, all pre-wired. So I'll probably just use, uh, maybe I can just use this one. Um, and uh, maybe that's the first thing I should do is maybe build a little uh, uh, a little board like this uh, just to make sure it's wired correctly before I commit to soldering it down. That's probably a smart, smart idea. I'll build it on this little proto board. And um, at least get it back to the point where we were running microcode. We were at least running a program out of microcode. We haven't gone the next step, which is to run programs out of instructions, but I want to get back to the point where we're running microcode and it's all on this one board and it's portable. Um, so that's the uh, uh, that's the next step. And um, yeah, so anyway, uh, that was a dumb error there. Uh, but I think it was just because I was used to the old program counter going on one way and now that I have a new one it's upside down so um, I think everything's uh, no harm no foul all right uh, I decided to go ahead and wire a board up I don't think there's uh, much risk to uh, to this one so I have the area here I've got a a piece of proto board uh, that I can cut so I'll make a little rectangle here about yay size. Um, I'll need to put uh, connectors on here so I can uh, have something to mount it to. And uh, then what we'll do is we'll add the socket uh, for our uh, GAL 22V10, uh, something like that. And we can add we can add our clock circuit uh, on here, or maybe sideways is better. Leave room for some buttons. 
Uh, still not sure how to drive the buttons. Um, we'll have to figure that out. But I thought I'd try this out just uh, for quick. Um, we know we're always going to have the gal for our two-phase clock, so that, that'll stay. Maybe this will get removed and something will get changed around. But for now, we'll just stick that on there. Um, and uh, get it back to running microcode. Um, and have it as a standalone unit. I'm having lunch with some friends of mine, so I thought I'd take it along and show them uh, what I'm doing. Uh, that's in a couple days, so get this going. Um, yeah, I think that'll be good. Uh, the other thing I need to do is add a, a connector on the back, uh, maybe a, um, a USB connector or something, so I can connect 5 volts to the whole thing. Um, or like a three and a half inch, um, three and a half millimeter uh, coaxial connector. I'll have to go through my junk pile and look around. Anyway, that's the uh, plan so far. All right, here's the new clock board. Um, it's not wired up yet, but the components are on there. And uh, you can see the board now. Oh, it's starting to shape up. I need to figure out which pins are the uh, from and the two pulses, and I'll get them wired up to the uh, to the state machine. And I need to add a uh, display here to the ROM RAM board. There we go. Yeah. We pretty much have everything on there now. Almost everything is wired up. Uh, I have one additional wiring I need to do, which is the um, carry-in from the uh, ALU. The carry-in, I have ideas to uh, hook up to one of the address lines so that all of the even instructions have carry-in set to zero and all the odd instructions have carry-in set to one. So I'll just make sure that my subtract instructions set the clear. They're, they're an odd instruction, and the add instructions will be even instructions. The um, the S zero one and two, which uh, control the ALU, come off of address bits seven, six, and five. Uh, so I think address zero will be for carry in, and I don't have address zero on a header right now, so I'll have to hardwire that in somehow. So I do need to add that connection. Um, and there's a, uh, a reset line for the... Uh, let's see, I think there's a reset for the program. Any Anytime there's a 163, uh, there's a reset line to clear it. So I need to bring the, um, the clear for the program counter and the clear for the micro uh, counter over to a button where I can reset things to zero. So I need to think that through also. So still a little bit of work to go, um, but uh, it is shaping up. 